Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Always glad to have this guy back. He's the Pinal County, um, Arizona Sheriff. It is Sheriff Mark Lamb. Mark, how are you? Good to see you. I'm doing great, Joe. Good to see you as always. Well, you are doing great. Uh, AmericanSheriff.store is where we want to send people to go and get American Sheriff Rules to Live By, your latest book. Um, and, and I appreciate everything that you do. I appreciate what you stand for. It's interesting. And, and I know that you're just Mark Lamb, but what you portray is truly just American. And I love that because when we see you walking around and interacting with people on on like the live PD shows and stuff like that, when we see your own videos at your website as well, when I talk to you, you're a regular guy who really doesn't waver at all away from traditional American values. And that's so hard to do today. How do you stick to your guns, literally and, and figuratively, when it comes to American values, knowing that the pressures around you say, America needs to change, America's no good? You know, I always say this is kind of in jest, but I say that I'm not smart enough, smart enough to do it any different. I just me. And really what it boils down to is I love three things. I love God, family and freedom. And I love this country. I love I love everything about it. And so I fight and they what has made it easier for me, honestly, Joe, is the fact that the line between good and evil and right and wrong has become so distinct yeah. that it, it has actually made it easier for me to stand up for the things that I believe in and I'm passionate about. It is not easy, I will tell you. I'll be the first one to admit that, but uh, it's going to be worth it. And frankly, the founding fathers sacrificed so much. They gave everything, and they never did get to enjoy the the beauties of the freedom that they created for us. Right. And the least I can do is, is have some level of sacrifice. And if that means I get beat up a little bit, then so be it. AmericanSheriff.store is the website I'd like you to go to. You can get the book directly from uh, from the man I'm talking to right now, Sheriff Mark Lamb. I want to circle back to that in a second because I agree with you. And then I want to disagree with you a little bit if I can. But before we do that, let's get into what's happening in, in Arizona. Give me a, a temperature of feeling, if you don't mind, of those in Pinal County, those you interact with all the time, um, with this Kerry Lake versus Katie Hobbs situation. I know that it's been certified mostly for Katie Hobbs. Some counties were holding out, um, but actually certifying it allows for lawsuits to happen. If you don't certify, you don't have a suit over anything. Katie Hobbs wants it done. She literally would certify her own election, which makes no sense. She probably should have recused. What are Arizonans saying about this situation? Are they ready to move on? Are they ready to dig in and fight? What are they saying? You know, you're getting a little bit of everything, but I think most Arizonans are still a little shell-shocked from the fact that one of the best candidates in the country lost to one of the worst candidates in the country. Right. But he is still a little uptight and upset about the fact that the tabulation machines in Maricopa County weren't working well. Um, everybody's a little bit upset about the fact that as a secretary of state, she certified her own election and didn't step down like she should have, recused herself completely from the election, even if you still collected the paycheck. And then everybody's getting a little bit upset about the fact that we're seeing some of these Twitter files dump, and some of them include um, emails from uh, Katie Hobbs and her camp yes. uh, trying to stop uh, information that they deemed as uh, you know misinformation or information that was harmful to them. And so you put all that stuff together, and Arizonans are not feeling great. Like, and we feel like we're kind of the the laughing stock of the country in some ways. You know, a lot of people feel that way. So we've got a myriad of feelings going on. Um, it's not great. It's interesting. Last time I had you on and we talked about the election and it wasn't as progressive as, as it has now. I got a lot of response, unfortunately, negatively, because they wanted to know why you didn't say to me on this show, I'm going to start arresting asses. You can't. There's nothing that you can do as the county sheriff to write what some deem as being wrong. This is about going through the courts. This is about lawsuits. If there were a crime committed in Pinal County, you would have arrested them. But there wasn't, was there? No, there haven't. Well, at least not that I have any evidence of. Yeah. You know, I'm one of those guys that if you bring any type of allegation, any even a, a small seed of evidence, I'm willing to run with it and figure out what went wrong. But for those listeners out there, there is what we call jurisdiction. Even though I have the ability to arrest anybody throughout the state, I still have to submit it to the correct court. Right. And in this case, if I were to go into Maricopa County and start filing charges through the Maricopa County Attorney's Offices, which is what I would have to do, they wouldn't take them because there's a jurisdictional issue there. Right. So just because I'm a sheriff doesn't mean I can go arrest anybody and everybody. It has to occur within my jurisdiction. It has to be a case that I have evidence that I can prove with beyond a reasonable doubt. Right. And it 
case that I can in good conscience take to the county attorney for us to be able to move forward with it. So there's a lot to it, folks. Trust me, I'm the first guy that's willing to go out and do it. If there's a crime that's occurred in my county, we're going to go after it. But it's just not as simple as people think it is. And I know that to be true, Mark. You wouldn't sit back on your laurels and just let it happen. You would certainly you'd certainly take action. Um, let me ask you, and again, you're not the sheriff of Maricopa County, so you're not investigating this. It is not in your jurisdiction. And as you said, you can arrest, but the, the prosecutor would just say, well, what are you doing, Mark? I'm not going to take these people. So I understand that. You don't have the ability. And that's what I told them when the response happened. But if you were in Maricopa County, and if you did have jurisdiction, is there something investigatable in your mind to all of a sudden on the election day that we all knew was coming, the tabulators didn't work, the printers weren't printing dark enough. Um, when I had uh, Carrie Lake on recently, she said, you know, there are issues where people were waiting in line, four, five, six hundred people at seven o'clock, and they're all by law allowed to vote, where only 150 people voted because everybody else left. They were forced to wait three hours. So is there something there that's investigatable in your mind? Yeah, I mean, you could look to see if there was any, if, there, if it was done on purpose. Yeah. You actually that's the rub i mean how do you know right you would have to prove that it was done on purpose to malign him look let me give you an example in in the primary election um Pinal county the guy who was the did not print enough republican ballots and so we actually looked into that to determine whether it was just incompetence or ignorance or if it was malicious yeah. um we did not find sufficient or any evidence for that matter to prove to show that it was malicious or or that there was some type of conspiracy or group that came together to say, hey, let's uh, let's go ahead and go against the Republicans. Not, let's not put enough ballots out there. Right. So you would have to go in and see it, that there was some malicious intent uh, it, with it. And now there may be, but there's going to have to be an investigation to prove that out. And, and again, this is all going to wash out in the, in the lawsuits that are, are to come. The Republican Party will sue. Carrie Lake will sue. We'll see exactly what's going to happen. If people were disenfranchised that day, they need to have the, the ability to go and vote. And if they didn't get that ability, there's a problem. It's American Sheriff Rules to Live By. That's the name of the book. Go to americansheriff.store, americansheriff.store to find out more about this book, to get the book, and also to find out about our good friend, Sheriff Mark Lamb. Let's Let's talk about the border. Joe Biden went to Arizona yesterday to tout the praises of a foreign owned company that will get the profits in Taiwan. Um, I guess hiring some people doing something for the economy in Phoenix, but it's not like, you know, it's an American company that we're building jobs. That's another story for another day. But there he is in Phoenix, which isn't that far from the border. And Joe Biden, in his 50 years in public service, his 50 years in public office, at least, I don't know if it's service or not, um, has never visited the southern border, ever, not once. He drove past it once from El Paso going to, uh, to New Mexico, running for re-election, I believe, in either 12 or maybe running for election the first time as vice president in 08. He's never gone. When asked about this yesterday, Mark, his answer to Peter Ducey from Fox, you're going to a border state, why aren't you going to the border? His answer was, there's a more, there's a more important thing going on there. Now, Mark, is there something more important about opening a fabrication plant than what's happening at the southern border? Well, if you're the big guy, then yeah, there probably is something more important. <laughs> That's true, but, probably. But you know, my question, my first question is, what's more important? What's more important than 107,000 Americans losing their lives to fentanyl and opioids that came from the southern border? What's more important than the, than the rise in crime and violent crime across this country? What is more important than national security of this country? I don't know what is more important. I'd certainly love him for us to tell the American people what he thinks more, is more important. Yeah. But I would tell you he is wrong. What is happening on our southern border is the most important thing that is affecting American lives every day. These are not national uh, issues that we talk about. These are issues that are affecting American lives every day. People are dying. People are being victimized from it. Not just Americans, but people that are trying to come here for a better life. Yes. They're doing it legally and wrong, but they're also being victimized by the cartels. So I just don't understand what is more important when you talk about human lives and daily quality of life. This is one of the most important things, if not the most important thing facing America right now. Have you heard what the administration is now doing to supersede you and, and usurp you and also the Border Patrol? They're literally starting the process and processing illegal aliens in Mexico. So once they get to the border, they just show this piece of this paperwork from the DHS, and they're doing it through through uh, non-governmental agencies, NGOs. Uh, they're showing the paperwork, and when they come across the border, that says they've already been given parole 
and they're now just waiting to be adjudicated in front of a court. And again, most of them don't show up at court. But these people are, Mark, they're not going to be counted as people illegally crossing now. That's what they're doing. Thousands and thousands of people are getting processed in Mexico. Had you heard this? No, I haven't. But this is the, the another example of shadiness and laziness. Why I say shady? Because they're they're circumventing the system. And lazy because they're too we- lazy to go and actually write a bill that makes sense for immigration and push it through the House that they, they have had control of for the last two years, yes. push it through the Senate, and actually do it the way the Founding Fathers set up for this country. They are bypassing that. They're trying to legislate from the executive branch. They continue to do these shady things consistently, and that this, is, this doesn't surprise me at all if this is their answer to it. They're not trying to stop people from coming in here. They are trying to make this as easy as possible, and anybody who gets in their way, they'll sue you, they'll do whatever they can to stop you from getting in the way of letting people come into this country illegally. Sheriff Mark Lamp in County, Arizona. Go to americansheriff.store, americansheriff.store. Get the book, American Sheriff Rules to Live By. Um, when it comes to the southern border, we know that it's broken. We know that it's open. Every time Karine Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, is asked about this, she says, well, the president on day one offered up a, a plan of legislation that the Republicans denied and wouldn't even look at. They won't work with us. This is the Republicans' fault. Now, Mark, I, I'm not as stupid as I look, although some think I am, but I know there was a Republican president, and I know that there was a Republican House and Senate for a couple of years, and what they did policy-wise to enforce the laws that are already on the books worked, and it worked very well. Is there some plan that you've heard from the White House that was offered up that would somehow fix the border, and Republicans are saying no? No, their plan was to undo everything President Trump did and to to talk bad about it and blame him for everything that was that's now going on. Um, so that the only plan they had was to undo what President Trump had done, and his plan was working. That was the most effective we had effective we had seen our border. Just to show you how effective it was. Um, with not long after President Trump took office, my anti-smuggling unit came to me and said, Sheriff, we're sorry. We're really out there working. There's just nobody really crossing the border. There's no drugs, really. We're just not seeing a lot of it. Please don't disband our unit. Wow. Um, now I need like 10 of those units because of what's going on with this administration. So it has been a very a night and day difference. Um, and so the only plan they had was to allow people to come into this country and really to, to reinvent America and to undermine, do that by undermining the rule of law. And, and it starts right there at the southern border. And Biden did that through executive order. You're exactly right. He undid so many policies that Trump put in place that were working. People wouldn't even try to come. Now they're, they're coming here. They're calling home. They're saying, hey, come on up, man. It's wide open. And nothing's going to change unless there's some backbone on the Republican side. Without the Senate, you're going to have a hard time doing anything, although the House can try to defund some of what's going on at the border, defund the 87,000 IRS agents, and maybe put that money to agencies like yours, and maybe put that money into the Border Patrol and ICE. Let me circle back to what we talked about earlier about people knowing the difference between right and wrong. I agree. My kids know the difference between right and wrong because I taught them right. Um, I know right and wrong because my parents taught me right. You know right from wrong as well. But there are people literally going, knowing there are no consequences, thinking something has shifted. It's okay to steal $950 worth of stuff from the CVS. It's okay to go to Home Depot and steal three pressure cleaners and then throw an 82-year-old to his death by throwing him down on the ground, just some guy working at the garden center. I mean, people, I think that there is a now blurred line, Mark, and correct me if I'm wrong, in the minds of people because if they go and do something that used to be wrong and they're not punished, there's no cash bail, they're released on their own recognizance, not even arrested if it's under $950, why don't they think that's right now? I mean, that you see what I mean? It's a moving line, isn't it? Absolutely, Joe. And you know what it is? Everything that you think deals with the rule of law, you talk about trans things and all the different things that they continue to push. Right. Really, what they're saying is, you can be your, the world revolves around you and it only matters what you think and believe. And if, as long as you think and believe it's okay, then it's okay for you to do whatever you want. That is what these folks are telling them. And so what that is, the, the, the repercussions of that are being seen as it relates to the rule of law. As we see people think they can do whatever they want, they start to violate the laws. They start to disrespect the laws and authority. And that is what we're seeing in America. So it's just this concerted effort to continue to tell people that they're the, the so special that they should be able to do and think whatever they want. Even if it's, they're trying to normalize pedophilia right now. Yes. They're trying to call like minor attracted people they are trying to do so much um and it's affecting us in the rule of law because we're telling people 
it, you, like you said, Joe, basically they're erasing that, that line that we have known of good and wrong, right and wrong, good and evil that we have as existed and that we were raised with. They're just trying to erase that and say, basically, whatever you feel like is okay, you can do it. Uh, well, Mark, how do we fix it? And let me give you a few examples in the recent weeks and months. We had the 82-year-old that I said, Mr. Razor, in uh, Hillsborough, North Carolina. This isn't Philadelphia. This isn't New York. This isn't any large metropolis city that has a crime problem. This is Hillsborough, North Carolina. Guy walks in, takes three pressure cleaners, puts them in the cart, and he's just going to leave. Now, here's an 82-year-old that has the same sort of uh, mentality that you and I have when it comes to right and wrong. Hey. Dude, you got to pay for that. He just put his arm up, didn't do anything else. The guy shoved him to the ground. The guy ends up on hospice and dies a few weeks later, um, and they're calling it a homicide. In, in Philadelphia, 150 young people go into a Wawa's, which is like a, a convenience store, steal everything. Nobody does anything. Two days ago, three days ago, somebody, uh, two guys go into a, an Apple store, and just they rip off $32,000 worth of free Apple stuff, and the Apple store literally is telling customers, just stay back. They're, they'll be done in a minute. Not a problem. Nobody's doing anything. There is no safety. There's no security. I won't go to these stores without carrying anymore. I mean, at the end of the day, I have to take the law into my own hands to prove to somebody what right versus wrong is, or else they're going to walk all over myself, my family, my community. So how do we change it? How do we get back to basics here and say, it's not okay to kill a guy stealing pressure cleaners. You can't go to the Apple store and steal all the stuff. You can't shut down a convenience store because you feel like it. Well, there's a lot to that, Joe. We don't have a ton of time, but yeah. you got to start by electing people that are going to enforce the rule of law, county attorneys, um, attorney generals, police, because we can arrest these people. If you have attorney generals that are not going to uphold the law, then they're, then it's, it's moot, you know, and this is what happens. It's like an unruly child. If you never discipline that child, that child's behavior is going to get progressively worse. Yes. And the only way to fix it is to really give them a hard, heavy hand. And, uh, you know, that's where we're at in America. We've got to start holding these people responsible and accountable. And if they need to go to prison for a while, then so be it. Yeah. Um, and, and look, I'm all about reform and helping people be better. But when you're a criminal, you got to know that there are consequences to your actions. A thousand percent. I couldn't agree with you more. We have to get rid of these AGs. These Soros back people don't make any sense. These DAs don't make any sense. And I wish we could take their discretion away because what they're doing is ruining the country. Go to americansheriff.store, americansheriff.store. American Sheriff Rules to Live By is the book. Go and get it at Sheriff Mark Lamb. Mark, thanks a million. If I don't talk to you, Merry Christmas to you and yours. Real quick, I got a Christmas ornament on there. I got a Christmas bundle. So what better way to protect your Christmas tree than with a American Sheriff, Sheriff Lamb Christmas ornament. I love so that. Go get it today, American Sheriff. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. You are a true patriot. Uh, Merry Christmas to you as well. God I, bless. I brother. appreciate you, brother. We'll talk soon. We're back after this. Stay right here.